Please explain more about the state of contraction as it pertains to not making decisions and or being in a state of waiting. I have often lived in this state, accepting that there's some unfoldment that has to happen and that I need to be patient and I need to allow time for more to reveal itself. Can you explain and talk more about this? I was in a relationship that always seemed to make me be waiting to see, waiting to see if we would live together, waiting to see if we were at that point, waiting to see if something was going to happen. Can you explain and discuss? So when we're talking about this particular issue, the people, this, this question that's being spoken, really what we're talking about here is the difference between waiting and receptivity. And this is often confused. When we talk about the difference between waiting and receptivity, there's often a confusion when we, when we dialogue about this. And we seem to kind of make them the same thing, but they're not the same thing. And I think we need to really look at the differences of what they are to be able to understand why waiting is such a contractive state. Okay? First of all, when you're waiting for something to happen, there's always a hoping that something on the outside is going to occur. Like there's this you're waiting for a sign, you're waiting for a message, you're waiting for the white knight to arrive and sweep you off your feet, for the mothership to land and take you to the home world. Whatever it happens to be, there's a sense of something on the outside, you're depending on something on the outside for then you to make a decision. So that is always outer referencing. There's always a state of outer referencing and waiting because it requires some other outer object for you to then make a move. Right? You're becoming dependent on that outer object, and then you outer reference, and you won't do anything as a result until this, this magical, mythical, un, unforeseen circumstance inspires you to do something differently. So what you're saying to me is that you're choosing not to make a decision. right? And when you choose not to make a decision until something happens, that's a state of waiting. So in order to kind of understand this question, we have to understand that there's really only two decisions you're ever making. There's a yes and a no. There is really nothing else, right? There's flavors of yes and flavors of no. And the interesting thing about this is that when we talk about waiting, the ego uses waiting as something that's not yes or no. It's kind of some place in the middle. And there's no such thing as a place in the middle. It's either one or the other. And see, this is the big deal with waiting because the Ego doesn't want to make a commitment to yes or no, so it will paint yes or no in a particular way so that it can stay uncommitted to one of these states. And if you stay uncommitted and, un and chaotically doubting one of these places that you're in, there's no way you can move forward. But ultimately, if you're uncommitted, if you choose not to decide, you've still made a choice. And that choice is no. It's just an uninformed, unempowered, unconscious, unaware, unaccountable no. So a lot of people think somehow by saying that they're waiting that it's expansive, but it's not because you're waiting for something to happen, so you're dependent on something on the outside. You're not willing to do or move forward with something based on your own inner referencing, your outer referencing, and you are not making a decision, and somehow by not making a decision, that's expansive. But if you not make a decision, it is a no, because it can only be a yes or it can be a no. So not making a decision automatically puts you in the category of no, and if you're in the category of no, that has the energy of contraction. So, you know, there's a lot of words that we use to, cre to take this no, and we, I can call it a soft no, because you're not, it's not an accountable no when you wait. You want it to be a yes, because it gives the illusion of activity and expansiveness. But really, it's a soft no that's a non-committed state, and that's even more disempowered than an empowered no, because you're not willing to openly commit. And as a result, the ego never has to be responsible or accountable for the decision. You can stay in this really twisted sense of limbo, non-committal, in between this place. But the truth is you're not there. You're just painting it that way. There is no place in the middle between yes and no. It's one or the other. There is no yes, no, or no, yes. It is one or the other. So you have to choose a side. So if you're going to choose no, be fucking accountable about the fact that you're going to choose no. 
Don't choose not to make a decision, go to state of waiting, and then pretend like you're doing something in a yes, because you're not. Even though you might convince yourself that you are. So if you choose not to make a, a decision, you are making a decision. You're just making a decision that's unaccountable, and you're not willing to admit that you're making a choice. And so as long as you're not committing, you don't have to be responsible. As long as you're not responsible, you don't have to take, you don't have to take or be acknowledging the accountable for the consequences that you create. So that's highly contractive. You know? So we create states like maybe, trying, that's all that in-between thing. I can't talk about this enough because one of the most powerful ways to move forward dealing with your ego is to make a commitment and just honor it and then with the choice that you're making, move forward with that choice and be and be totally accountable to the choice regardless of what it is. Not being accountable makes it very challenging for you to ever be available and meet that with yourself. Now that is very different than being receptive, right? We want to paint that space of limbo of waiting for something to happen, being dependent and codependent on something on the outside world as some magical form of spiritual receptivity. It's not. Receptivity just means the ability and willingness to take in information and ideas, to be able to receive. That describes your openness, which is an expansive state. And you're open to new ideas and opinions, but that does not imply no and that nothing is happening. You could be open and receptive to new ideas while you're taking an action, while you're saying yes to something. Or you could be saying no and be accountable to that no and be receptive to the possibility that that no could change to a yes. You don't have to be in waiting to be receptive. They're not the same. You can be receptive the entire time you're in action. And you can be committed to one of those two choices and still be receptive the whole time. And that could change the course of your decisions based on the receptivity you have. So that openness and ability and willingness to be open to new ideas is not, by any means, waiting. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you're making decisions for your highest and best, you know, ultimately, you're in a place where you're being receptive. But being receptive is not the same thing as waiting. And we make this confusion, and the ego loves to make this confusion because we can paint the no as a, a justifiable yes. We can paint in a contraction, contractive state of waiting for something to happen as receptivity and then justify that it's okay to be there. And it is okay to be there, just admit it. Because then at least you can deal with the truth of your decision and move forward. Right? Now the word I try is the exact same thing as waiting. Trying is a perpetual state of trying to do something but never achieving it. The word actually implies perpetual movement towards something without achieving. So when people says, I'm trying, I always say, don't try, just do. Like to be Yoda. Mm, there is no try. Do or do not. You know, Tr don't try, do. Make a commitment, make a mistake, refine, choose something different. Trying is trying is 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 uh, cowardly. I mean, really. It doesn't it, there's no accountability in it. Just like maybe. Maybe is another one that's that limbo state that we use to paint something. Maybe I'll go to the party. Well, what you're really saying is right now in the moment, no, I'm not going to the party, Party, but there's a high probability that it could change to a yes if I'm receptive to new information. So maybe is basically a no, a soft no that could become a yes. But it is a no. So this is very important. When I work with people, it's really, it's really important for me to define this because anybody who has chaos in their consciousness, anybody who uses the ego confusion of doubt to not make decisions, the very most powerful thing is to make really confident conviction decisions with conviction and then deal with the consequences of those decisions so you can learn. If you always stay in a state of limbo, you can't fucking learn. 
And you can't learn because you're not accountable to anything that you're doing. You just stay in this mass confused limbo state of somehow painting the version that something's happening when you're spinning on a treadmill trying, maybe you'll arrive and choosing not to decide. So I always say to people, go with it, commit. That's the, one of the fastest ways to cut through the illusion of the ego. To choose one of those two things and then refine your decisions based on that. Don't be lazy and nebulous and unwilling to make a commitment to yourself. Be willing to fail better. Fail better, okay? Make a choice, fail at it, learn from it, move forward. It's faster. It makes the process faster. And you're super, super in alignment when you're doing it, right? People always ask me, how do you change so fast? What is it that makes you change so fast? And the, the way I change fast is I do not stay in the middle. I pick a side and I make full commitment to that side and I'm receptive to the idea of that side. I'm also receptive to the possibility that it could change. But making no decision is a decision and the decision is an unempowered, disempowered, unaccountable, irresponsible, cowardly no. And when you can get honest about that, now you have a chance to change. Waiting is perpetual trying without ever achieving what you want. Receptivity is the ability to take in that information and make a different decision. They're not the same thing. Not the same thing. Do not wait. So you still can be receptive for something to happen, but you have to be doing something internally and inter-referencing your decision in a relationship. You're not waiting for someone to do something, then reacting to that, whatever that is, and then moving forward. You're tuning into what you feel your own direct experience is, and then you're organically moving from that. That's not a sense of waiting. That might be a slow process. There might be receptivity in that, but you're not waiting for something in the outside world. You're not waiting for something in the inside world. You are attuning, and based on that experience, you are responding in action accordingly. That's not waiting. So, don't stay in the middle. If you're one of those people who get confused and like chaos and spin, stop the spin by making a decision. Choose. And then from that decision, you have the ability to move forward. If you don't make a decision, you are making a decision. You're just not being aware of the decision you're making. And it's really important if you want to be conscious to be really accountable to what decision you're actually making because then you can deal with it. Otherwise, the ego can take that and spin that any way it wants to, justifying your position again and again and again, bringing in information and bringing in the postman who agrees with you and bringing in documentation and articles that you've read and circumstances and data and proof and evidence and you can justify spinning and staying in the space of a space of non-movement and contraction and call it I'm working towards something I'm trying bullshit you're spinning in nonsense nonsense it's not getting you anywhere you're not making a decision Shit or get off the pot. Pick a side. The fucking ego hates that. It hates the decision-making process of that. You immediately cut through the ego when you do that. You're ultimately immediately irresponsible and accountable. And you just get to refine. You get to fail, make mistakes, try something else, and move forward. Then you, That's what refinement's all about. Be leery of this inability or lack of desire to make a commitment towards something. It is a high state of contraction and it does not get you anywhere fast.